Before I start this video, I want to thank you for all of your positive feedbacks and support and let you know I will continue to make more videos. And with that being said, if you have followed the Elvena story so far, you know that the lands of Elvena were once populated by many different races. But all of the humans and the elves became extinct for mysterious reasons. Now the wisest and brightest minds of your race have found ways to revive them. Every future segment in the research menu would center on a different race, giving you lots of new building types but also further improving the old ones. It's a clash of two cultures, each learning and growing from the other. A newly revived race is weak at first. You need to help them get their feet back on the ground. To bring their culture back to former glory, you provide some space where they can build their own small settlement within your town. A settlement that follows its own rules and economy. In exchange, they will provide your town with new architectural ideas. This will take some of your buildings in rather crazy directions. Once the race is ready to live on its own again, they will leave your town and populate the world, making room for the next guest race. Finally, your scientists were able to build a portal that can revive long-time forgotten races. After unlocking the portal technology and placing the portal in your town, the first dwarfs will arrive immediately. At first, they are but a shade of their former selves. But once you set up the first small settlement and push your research further ahead, they will recover fast and help you invent plenty of new stuff for your own town. The dwarves are true craftsmen. Soon you can construct the first granite mines, followed by copper foundries. Granite and copper are new resources that give you access not only to upgrades of their buildings, but also to a bunch of new technologies. Those technologies include new upgrade levels for the existing buildings, new culture buildings, and of course, new unit upgrades. There is really cool stuff to unlock. The Fairies is our newest chapter in the research menu. Of course, it has all the typical stuff that you would expect in a new chapter. The map expansions, squad size upgrades, many new culture buildings, and upgrades for most of your existing buildings. But let's focus today on the completely new stuff. First of all, once your dwarves moved out of your town to found their own cities, you can build up a new settlement for the fairies. The fairies are talented gardeners. Soon the settlement can produce all kinds of different plants and even some animals. Every option in your new fairy farms produces something different. And of course, every production has a different time. Some productions will even require other productions. For instance, you will need silk to produce velvet, and you will need both cocoons and dream sheep to produce the most precious soma. We hope you will enjoy this new kind of farming challenge. The fairy race will also receive two updates shortly after launch. The first one is two new ancient wonders, which will again have very unique effects. The first one focuses on your supply production, the other one improves your trading skills and boosts your guest race productions. The second update will finally add new battle units to the game. There is a new barracks-like building, the mercenary camp, where you can train the two fairy units. They come with new abilities. Both can fly over obstacles. Besides that, one of the units is more defensive, able to cast a protection spell on allies, while the other one is more offensive and can attack twice per round. Orcs were always high up on the list of the races you want to see, so they were a logical next step. But since Orcs are done in many games out there, we thought about how we could still surprise you and give them a unique Elvener touch. And that's where the Goblins came in. They live in a, let's say, strange collaboration with the Orcs. On the one side, we have these mischievous but somehow genius little creatures that do all kinds of experiments with mushrooms <clears throat> and Orcs. Yeah, and on the other side there are the big, muscular, green barbarians that just like to smash things and loot whatever they can find. And you are the one who organizes this unholy union. First, you learn how to breed orcs in your armory. So you are gonna need at least one or two armories on level 20. Better start upgrading soon. Then you build plenty of mushroom farms for your cute critters, <clears throat> goblins. To grow special mushrooms with magical powers takes a lot of time, so you should select your productions carefully. And finally, you call your orcs to the new rally point. 
and send them off to various adventures, equipped with the appropriate mushrooms. Magic mushrooms and orcs? Sounds like a big party to me. Well, that might actually be a good idea. But what could possibly come out of such a wild party? We are an economy-driven game after all. Resources and stuff, you know. Don't worry, we will find something. Okay, your call. Timon, what will happen to the orcs breeding armories once the orcs and goblins move on? They will eventually, right? Just like dwarves and fairies did. Yes, and of course, the armories will stay in your city and you can continue to breed orcs. I can assure you, you will need them in the future, in your city and on the world map. Phew, I just imagined what a horde of unemployed orcs would do to my city. Good to know that I will also need them in the future. By now, the orcs and goblins have a rather quirky way of life. Their rude nature and respectless treatment of the forest has sparked the interest of an old race of Elvena, the Wood Elves. They were actually monitoring your every step since you built your first portal for the dwarves. And I guess they don't like what they are seeing now with the orcs and goblins. Well, that's an understatement. But wait, does that mean that this race wasn't extinct like the others? So I don't need to build a portal this time? Yes, indeed. When the Wood Elves arrive at your orcish town, it is not suitable for them to build a settlement. So they teach you how to use mana, a powerful force, to gain knowledge about how to build your buildings in accordance with nature again. Mana? How does it work? Mana is produced by new culture buildings and used to unlock new technologies in the tech tree, upgrade your main hall and build a new street for your city. Sounds great so far. Where is the catch? Mana is also a challenging resource, mainly because of two things. First, while not all culture buildings will produce mana in the future, those who do will require a street connection. Whoops, that will make arranging my city a bit more complex, even though there is usually plenty of space at the beginning of a new chapter. And secondly, mana can only be stored for a certain time. A bit of mana decays every day, flowing back to nature where it came from. So, I shouldn't store it for too long and just use it as soon as possible. What is used can't decay. And the decay is moderate. But sometimes, it takes several days to produce enough mana, e.g. for the next technology. But I'm confident if you made it that far, this will be no problem for you. Once you've prepared your city, the Wood Elves will arrive and you can eventually build a settlement for them. So, don't use up all your space for the mana culture buildings. Just saying. Oh, thank you, wise old man. This time, there won't be a building called Portal, but with the Forest Blade, there is a building that has the same functionalities, like production booths and storages for settlement goods. Ah, so my ancient wonder that boosts portals will also boost this one. Indeed. To prepare for the Wood Elf settlement, you process mana into mana tiers and dapple the ground with it. Then, you can grow many different tree-like buildings where Wood Elves, Tree Ends and Wood Ghosts work hand in hand to produce many different magical resources. Lots of new stuff. Reminds me a bit of the fairies in their farming. True, but with an important difference. Mana, as every resource that is produced outside of the settlement, will stay in the game even after that chapter. Dragons are also just sorcerers, archonologists to be precise. And there are way cooler sorcerers as well, like alchemists who control the elements of nature and necromancers who can revive the dead. Dragons are just all smart Alec storytellers. Maybe your brain could use some smart Alec fire breath. It still seems to be frozen from the winter event. Alchemists are dangerous vandals destroying classrooms for the sake of science, which is most likely not even related to magic at all. And necromancers? They just give me the creeps. What is more horrifying than a bad teacher? A bad teacher that never dies. Listen to us, we already sound like them. Constantly competing and not always in the kindest way. I wonder how they ever got along to build up these beautiful universities. Yes. Let's talk about the university the players have to build now. So, the sorcerers decide to found a new university in your town. And I recommend to make room for a big square. The university will need a lot of space. First, you should construct the wisdom square to attract apprentices. Next to it, you can place the campus, the core of the university. 
and around the campus you can build your faculties. The campus grows over time, giving you more space to add more faculties. It can be quite challenging to arrange all the faculties efficiently, since you only have one campus and no street this time. Once you've built some faculties, more and more apprentices will arrive and you can start seminars where they train to become either cool archaeologists, boring alchemists or creepy necromancers. Yeah, that's what he said. And then, in order to ensure that your lame iconologists learn something useful, you can train them afterwards in either alchemy or necromancy. In general, every apprentice will be sent to two of the three seminars to complete his studies. This means, in the end, you will have three different combinations, or let's say, graduates. The graduates are the pride and joy of the university. They will come up with new ideas for your city and thus unlock new technologies for you in the tech tree. If you train enough of them. We hope you enjoy this new guest race as much as we do. Let us know in the forums and tell everyone that Arcanologist dragons are the coolest so Next to alchemists and necromancers. See you next time and keep on playing! <laughs>